And now we come to forensic investigation. And the name by itself might not mean much in the context of computer security because it's something that we also use in the physical world as well, where we talk about, suppose, a murder. If you've ever seen some of these shows on TV where people investigate murders and other crimes, they use a lot of forensic uh, tools and techniques there. Uh, but here, there's a very specific subdivision of forensics that deals with computers and information technology. And that's really where it intersects with cybersecurity as a practice. And what we're talking about usually is very much the same thing in both cases, the physical and the digital world. We're talking about recovery and investigation of evidence. And usually what that means is there's been a crime or there is a suspicion of a crime and we're trying to retrace the steps. We're trying to reconstruct what happened based on what's available to us. And usually, of course, there's hardware and there's software because you could have something that is in a physical state of being damaged, suppose, or changed. And that's, of course, talking about hardware where something altered the state of the hardware because of something that we consider to be illegal or we suspect was illegal. And what we mean here is we can actually look and see if a particular uh, piece of hardware location-wise was somewhere that it wasn't expected to be, or we can see whether it has actual traces of use that was not expected, whether it be that it's turned off or turned on. It could be as simple as that, where it wasn't expected to be or there's actual physical damage on it that we can inspect, or suppose somebody had a hard drive that they had some data on that they don't want people to find, and they damaged it hoping that data can't be recovered, and then we need to reconstruct the hard drive and get back the bytes of information that the attacker or the criminal thought were lost forever. And with software, it actually can be much more complicated than that because sometimes it's about data and where data was at a particular time and what that data looked like and what happened to the data, kind of retracing the life cycle of data or the state of a software system or a network after the fact. And that is all part of computer forensics and forensic investigation in cybersecurity. And that's what we're doing. We're following a trail through what could have happened, trying to reconstruct events, reconstruct the timeline, and gather evidence uh, that supports our theories in the forensics investigation. And usually there's a few things like logs that we look at. So these can be access logs of particular websites or networks. We can look at the internet history of a suspect if we suspect they were logging onto a website either that they shouldn't have or, you know, it's a legitimate website that they were using for nefarious purposes. Or we look at their phones and look at the location history of the phone. Or we look at any of the call history or text history that's available on the phones, depending on what that particular phone was set up to collect or what's still retained on there. And then there's the hard drive that I mentioned where... If the data is on there still, it's either magnetic or flash media. If it's possible to recover or if it was never erased, then we get the data off of there. And then there's stuff that's actually in memory. So volatile RAM, electronic memory, where the one that you don't usually suspect can be collected from. If there is a way to not lose that, if the phone or other device or laptop is not powered down, There are things that the uh, criminal or the suspect might not know was retained in RAM, but it might be in a sector of RAM unintentionally or intentionally that they did not think to empty out or just wasn't accessible to them and is accessible to the investigators because they have the right tools and admin access. And the focus is both on recovering the data and recovering the evidence and also analyzing it and analyzing it to make sure that it actually supports or disproves 
the theory or the accusation of what happened. And this is all, of course, in support of a criminal investigation, usually. Although not always necessarily. Sometimes it could be just something that's a private matter uh, at a private company or just between two people. And some of the same techniques can be applied, but often the tools and the access required to do this work is only available to government agencies or the owners of the devices and the information like a private corporation. And so forensics is usually something that gets involved when situations are serious.